Hey there, it's CJ Willie, and today is Thanksgiving. I have an extra special treat. I have in front of me an Innistrad Crimson Val pre-release box. I love playing limited. Draft is my favorite. I also like to play sealed. I'll go ahead and crack open the packs, and then I'll put together what my sealed deck would look like. Okay, we take a look at the bundle. Not the bundle, the pre-release pack. Check out what we have inside. I have a green and blue, kind of standard, smaller size die with the Crimson Bow symbol. That's pretty cool. And then I don't want to spoil my surprise on the promo card that I got, so I'm gonna put them down like that. Slide them up to the side here a little bit. And then I'll get to cracking these packs. I've only been able to do a couple of limited drafts with Crimson Bow, so I'm not as familiar with the cards in the set as I typically am when I do my bundle cracking videos and other pack cracking videos. Adam at Will. I like the showcase cards in Crimson Bow a little bit more than the Midnight Hunt. Kind of go slow through the commons this time around. Can't believe they reprinted the same card that was just in Midnight Hunt. Maybe they ran out of ideas, don't know. Okay. Flip card is gonna be Weary Prisoner, and that'll transform into Wrathful Jailbreaker. Uh, the Look and Filthy Showcase cards is just really good. Blood Hypnotist, Markov Waltzer. Got an uncommon flip card. So a Restless Bloodseeker transforms into Blood Soaked Reveler. And the first rare is Splendid Reclamation. Not necessarily a rare that you want to see in your sealed box. Pack one has some good uncommons, but the rare is not quite going to do it for me. That's the risk that you run in sealed is having rares or even mythic rares that just can't get you over the top. All right. Let's do these a little bit quicker. Canned Mariner transforms into Rip Hook Reader. Uncommons Edgar's Awakening. Crawling Infestation. Catapult Fodder transforms into Catapult Captain. Nice. This is what you want to see in your sealed box a mythic cemetery protector. Definitely be a card that I can look to build around. So far my limited draft has been going pretty well. Uh, the ones that I played in so far uh, I've done reasonably well, finished with a winning record. Pre-release boxes you get six packs and then your promo card. Uh, halfway through with the third pack. Okay. Fearful Villager transforms into Fearsome Werewolf. My first um, limited was me drafting Red Green Werewolves. Went pretty well. Surprisingly, since I couldn't do much with Red Green Werewolves in Midnight Hunt, it seemed to work out in Crimson Bow. All right, Resistance Squad, Into the Night, Wandering Mind, and cool, Edgar Charmed Groom. I think this card is awesome. Just doesn't die, it doesn't go away unless it gets exiled. Black-white still keeps me in kind of a white-based theme.
and get over how cool those showcase cards look. Looks like I've got something cool coming up. Try not to spoil it. I'm not doing a very good job. Looks like it's a rare. All right. Kindly Ancestor flips into Ancestor's Embrace. So I like how the transform cards can be a creature on one side and an enchantment on the other. Uncommon's Geist Light Snare, Fleeting Spirit, Foreboding Statue, Boldaren Estate is my rare. This could be useful if I want to splash another color and vampires are in white and black and red. And then my foil card is a foil rare, Katilda Dunhart Martyr. So it's in white. So far it looks like I'm gonna be white based. Probably black, maybe white, black, red, Mardu, Blinding Geist, transforms into Spectral Binding, Cloaked Cadet, Cobble Lancer, Oak Shade Stalker, transforms into Moonlit Ambusher, and then my next rare is Path of Peril which is black, and I would be able to cast the cleave cost. So I'm looking pretty strong, black, white. Okay, final pack before I get into my promo foil card. Ragged Recluse transforms into Odious Witch, Geistlight Snare, Arm the Cathars, Alluring Suitor. Uh, this card surprisingly has done pretty well in my drafts. Deadly Dancer, and then my rare is Investigator's Journal. So maybe a way for me to get card draw. Black White, maybe I can go kind of wide with some tokens. And then that gives me the ability to draw some cards and then eventually be able to sacrifice it and draw a card. All right, I'm gonna check out my promo foil. Let's see, I'll save that for myself. Yeah, I don't know, maybe I'll give it away since I don't really play that much on Arena. Oh, uh, this is way awesome. The deck kind of spacer thing. Set that there, maybe on top of those. All right, before I look at my promo foil, take a look at this. The Binding Vows of Olivia Voldaren and Edgar Markov. These are always pretty cool inserts in the pre-release boxes. Okay, what did I get? Nice, Dorothea Vengeful Victim is my foil promo rare. Okay, it's blue-white, maybe I can splash it. All right, I'll take just a second, clear this up, and come back with a deck that I've built. Okay, I'm back. I was able to look through the cards, and I think I have two different deck ideas. The first deck idea is a Mardu deck. White, red, splashing, one card for black. So I'll get these extras out of the way and go through the deck. It's basically a white-red aggro deck. White humans, red vampires. Hoping to get in fast and deal a lot of damage to my opponent and get them on their back foot. So my one drops are Traveling Minister and Uldaran Epicure. Going to my two drops, Fleeting Spirit is a pretty aggressive card. I think it can get in quite a bit of damage. I'm not quite sure about Parish Blade Trainee, but I mainly have it in there because it's a human. And if it does get counters, I can put them on another creature. An aggressive vampire. 
And then in my three drops, I have this flyer that maybe could get one more counter on it. And a 3-2 flyer has to be dealt with. Pretty much bulk, just a three mana, three, three. Can't attack alone, but in this deck, I don't think I'm going to be attacking alone. Resistance squad, I need a lot of humans so that I can draw a card off of it. Alluring suitor, if I can get two creatures attacking, I can transform it. And it has some useful advantages once it's transformed. Um, Belligerent guys gets me some blood tokens. Once again, these are just on curve aggressive creatures blood hypnosis three three for three can't block i don't plan on doing a lot of blocking daybreak combats gets into the battlefield gives another creature a little bit of a power buff getting damage this isn't as an aggressive creature but each combat i'm going to give a couple other creatures plus one plus oh and that hopefully will continue to put my opponent on the back foot this is my only black splash got vampires in here if i can get edgar on the battlefield beefs them up and then Edgar just doesn't die. He simply doesn't die. Even on his backside, I'm going to be creating more creatures and then hopefully be able to transfer back into Edgar. Cemetery Protector. I don't know how aggressive it is, but it's going to hopefully get me some more 1-1 one -one human tokens out there and I can overwhelm my opponent with mass creatures. Heron of Hope. Really, Flyers in Limited a lot of times can win the game. Gives me a little bit more advantage if I'm gaining life. And then a 4-4 four, four Menace for 5, creates a couple of blood tokens. This could be the finisher card. Uh, Spell-wise, set that down. Adamant Will, many of these are just combat tricks. Plus 2, plus 2, gives my creature indestructible. In a way, it's going to be a kill spell to get rid of my opponent's creatures. Arm the Cathars, it's sorcery, but I can give power and toughness boost along three different creatures. And if I've got three creatures on the battlefield... Playing this on turn four could really, really set my opponent back. Fierce Retribution, mainly going to use it to take out one of their attackers since I'm not blocking. Nurturing Presence gives me a 1-1 one, one White Spirit, and then every time a creature enters the battlefield, I can give another creature plus one, plus one. So it's just kind of a deck that I'm building to overwhelm my opponent. Really, my only defensive card is Sigurda's Imprisonment. And I'm going to hold on to this till later in the game and slap it on their bomb or a bigger creature so I can continue to get through. Sure Strike, perfect card to win combat. Honored Heirloom is in there because I need it to add black to my mana pool. So I'll be able to cast Edgar. And then Voldaren Estate, since I've got plenty of vampires, it could probably help with mana fixing for both black and red. I plan on playing a 41 card special, which in Sealed, I think I do quite often. I'm going to have 24 spells and 17 lands. I'm going to put in one swamp, and then I'll split the other lands. Eight plains, eight mountains, and then that singular swamp. Hopefully with three sources of black mana, I shouldn't have too much of a problem getting Edgar down on the battlefield. Okay, I'm going to clean this up, and I'll be right back with my second idea for a deck. Okay, I'm back with my second deck. This one, as you can see, is just white black and it runs on the premise of very controlling very defensive a lot of the creatures in the deck are focused on holding my opponent down and not letting them do too much i have the persistent specimen great card one one you can continually bring it back from your graveyard to the battlefield as i'll show in a second it'll be great sacrifice fodder Fleeting Spirit sticks around because I've taken the humans out. It's now white base spirits, but it's still a good card in an aggressive situation. Restless Bloodseeker is one of my two vampires. I shouldn't have a problem gaining life and getting blood tokens once I can sacrifice those blood tokens. Then I've got a 3-3, but I've also got a way that I can slowly drain my opponent out. And in sealed, a lot of times in the controlling deck, that's what you want to do. Foreboding Statue allows me to mana fix, and once I've got enough counters on it, it's going to flip into a 5-5 and add additional mana at my pre-combat main phase. And a 5-5, if I can hold off, should be good enough to win the game for me. Catapult Fodder is a good card that kind of preys on toughness, and I can transform it once I've got three or more creatures with toughness greater than their power. Most of the creatures in the deck have lower power than toughness. 
flipping him, I get a 2-6, and then I can start pinging away at my opponent's life total by sacrificing my own creatures. Uh, Kinley Ancestor is one way I can gain life. It's a spirit, and to note in a second, that's going to pay off with Kadil the Dunhart Modder, who will have higher power and toughness based upon how many spirits or enchantments I control. Kindly Ancestor is also an enchantment on the backside that gives life link. So a number of ways to gain life, to get blood tokens, to flip my vampire. Edgar is once again in this deck, gives my other vampire plus one plus one. It still is a powerful card that's a 4-4 four, four you got to deal with. When it dies, you flip it over and I get more creatures. And then once I've got three 1-1 one, one white and black vampires, I can flip Edgar. Cemetery Protector, it's a mythic. It's a good card. Flash it in. It's the only human in the deck. Heron of Hope, once again, gains me life. Rot Tide Gargantuan, I've got plenty of things to sacrifice that are smaller. They can make my opponent sacrifice one of their creatures. And then I've got these two big fatties that just hold off the ground and I can tap down my opponent's creatures. Now into my spells that are focused on taking care of my opponent's creatures. Very controlling. Destroy target attacking creature, or if it's later in the game, I can just destroy any creature. Sigarda's Imprisonment, you know, is enchantment that will hold down their bomb. Bleed Dry takes out just about any creature I can think of unless they get hexproof. Grizzly Ritual is another way to get a couple more blood tokens. It destroys any creature or planeswalker. Blood Fountain gives me a blood token when it enters, and I can sacrifice it and return two creature cards from my graveyard to the battlefield. Edgar's Awakening allows me to get one of my creatures to the battlefield. Sorry, Blood Fountain gets them into my hand. And then this is kind of my coup de gras. If things get too crazy, I can just wipe the board. If the spells to bring back creatures, then I can reestablish my board. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like it, please subscribe and share. Tell me which deck you prefer. Is it my Mardu deck, Splashing Black for Edgar Charmed Groom? Or is it my Controlling White Black deck? Until next time when I'm back to crack some more Magic the Gathering.